Hello. Welcome to Ignani.com. Microsoft Excel 2010. Chapter 1. Getting started with Excel 2010. Part E. Moving around a worksheet. Keyboard tricks. In our previous video, I covered the various ways, in which we can navigate around a worksheet, using a mouse. While you may find it easier to use the mouse to navigate, but with more than 17 billion cells in a worksheet, it's not that easy just to use mouse alone to navigate. Excel, provides a number of handy key combinations, to navigate around the worksheet faster than the mouse could. However, using keyboard requires just a bit of getting used to. You can use the standard navigational keys on your keyboard, to move around a worksheet. These keys work just as you'd expect. The up arrow key, moves the active cell one row up for every click, the down arrow, moves the active cell one row down, for every click. The right and left arrows, move the active cell one column to the right, and one column to the left for every click, respectively. While the arrow keys only move the active cell by one row or column at a time, if you would like to move a bit faster, then try the page up, and page down keys. The page down key moves the active cell, down by one full window, and page up moves the active cell, up by one full window for every click, while page up, and page down provided vertical movement of the active cell, we don't have any keys as page left and page right for horizontal movements. To compensate that, we can take help from the ALT key. Use ALT plus page down, and ALT plus page up, to move the active cell, by one page to the right, and one page to the left respectively. Note, while using the page up, or page down keys, it's not possible to speak this in terms of actual number of rows, since it depends on the number of rows displayed in the window. With the scroll lock on, the arrow keys changes its functionality. Instead of moving the active cell, they scroll the screen. Up and down arrow scrolls the screen one row up or down respectively. Right and left arrow scrolls the screen one column right or left. Note, with the scroll lock on, the active cell doesn't change its position. Only the screen scrolls. If you have scrolled the screen and the active cell is not visible, you can use Ctrl plus Backspace to scroll the screen to display the active cell. You need to remember the home key combinations, which bring you back to the beginning of the row or to the first cell which is the A1. Let me explain this in a bit detail. While you are in any part of the worksheet, the home key will move the active cell to the first cell of the current row which is column A. You can use the control plus home key combination, to move the active cell to the first cell on the first row, which is the A1 cell. If you notice, we are currently in the 1046th row, and column AI. By tapping the control plus home key combination, we can move the active cell to the first cell in the worksheet, which is cell, A1. Like the home key, you can also use the end key in combination with control key. This combination acts a bit different than the control plus home combination. It's a slightly trickier move. In a blank worksheet, tapping control plus end will not move anywhere. Let us add some data into cells M5 and J20. Tapping control plus end, now moves the active cell to the last cell in the worksheet that intersects the last row and last column containing data, in our example, the last row containing the data is 20th row, since cell J20 is the last row that contains data, and the last column containing the data is M, from cell, M5, hence we will end up at row M20, which is the cell that intersects for column M and row 20. However, there is one problem here. Assuming that you delete the data in one of the cells that you have mentioned above, or, 
If you move it to some other column or hour prior to these cells, say deleting the data in cell M5 and moving it to L1, or moving the data from the cell J20 to J22, and then deleting the data itself from the new cell altogether. Even in such a case, if you use the control plus end combination, it will still take you to the M22 cell, since the last row that contained data was 22, from J22, and column was M, from M5, though these cells currently does not hold any data. If you want the Excel to take you to the proper destination, make sure you save the file and try again. Now, you will reach the proper cell, that marks the last cell that intersects the row and the column in the worksheet. Since we only have one cell containing data, L5, when we tap Ctrl plus end, we will be directly taken to that cell. Excel also lets you jump a range of cells in a single bound using a Ctrl plus arrow key combination. These key combinations jump to the edges of your data cells. Let me explain this with an example. Assuming that you have a few cell ranges or cells containing data in your worksheet. And these, cells and cell ranges all separated, by a few, or a large number of empty cells. The first or last cell that contains data in these ranges is what I am referring to as the edge cells. All the border cells, that is, the starting cells of the columns and rows and the ending cells of columns and rows in any cell range is what I am referring to as edge cells. If there is only one cell with empty cells around it, then that will also qualify as the edge cell. Let me give a brief about these key combinations and their results. When the active cell, is inside a cell range containing data, tapping control plus arrow keys, will move to the edge cell, that is the first or last cell in the column or row of the cell range. Let me demo them to you. Assuming that all the cells in the row and column of the active cell are all empty. When you tap Ctrl plus right arrow, it will move the active cell to the end of the row or in other words to the last column of the current row. As you can see, the active cell is now in the column XFD, which is the last column. If you tap Ctrl plus down arrow, it will move to the last row. So does control plus left arrow and control plus up arrow, which moves to the first column of the current row and first row of the current column respectively. If we try with a sheet with one or more cell ranges or cells containing data, they will move to the edge cells. Control plus right arrow will move the active cell to the last column in the cell range. Once you are at the edge cell, Tapping the same combination again, will skip over all the nearby blank cells, and land in the next cell in the arrow's direction containing data. Using control plus left arrow combination will move to the previous edge cell, in other words, the starting cell of the cell range. Same combination again will continue the jump until we reach our destination or the first column. Control plus down arrow will move to the last row in the cell range. Control plus up arrow will move to the first row in the cell range. If there aren't any more cells with data in that direction, you will jump to the cell at the very edge of your worksheet. This comes in handy when you have two or more tables of data, all separated by a large number of empty rows. If you are at the first table, and the other ones are to the right of it, you can jump to each of them by simply using control plus right arrow twice. This will jump the active cell from one table to another, and you can use the control plus left arrow twice to return back. If you find this a bit confusing, then I suggest you to pause this video, and try it on your own to understand it better. The sample Excel file that was used in this video can be found on our site, if you need it. One important key, on the keyboard that we use often is the Enter key. Enter key, by default moves the active cell by one row at a time. However this can be configured to move in any direction we may want, but only by a single cell. By clicking on the File tab, select the menu item, Options, 
and then select Advanced. Under the section Editing Options, look for the words. After pressing Enter, move selection with a drop down box named Direction below it. By default, the value that is selected will be Down. Change it to any other value as you like, and click OK, which will then move the active cell in that direction. Notice that, when we press the Enter key, it is moving the active cell up by one row, since we changed the option to Up. However, for some reason, if you don't want to move the cell in any direction, you can always uncheck the checkbox, which will leave the active cell unchanged even after pressing the Enter key. Another important key is the F5 which opens up the Go to dialog box. But, you can use this feature only if you remember the cell's address. While all the keys mentioned earlier did not require you to know the cell's address, F5 needs an exact address. If you know exactly where you need to go, you can use the Go to feature to directly jump to it. You can either press the F5 key, or Ctrl plus G key combination to open the Go to dialog box. Type in the cell address and click OK, or press Enter. Go to moves the active cell to the address you specify. If you are working on a large worksheet, where just scrolling through the worksheet is not feasible enough, Go to feature comes in very handy, and avoids all the hassles of scrolling through the worksheet. Let me show you with an example. Type in the cell address, ABC123, and press Enter. Excel jumps directly to the address that you have specified. This feature becomes a lot easier, and useful, as you use it, since the Go to window maintains a list of all the most recent cell addresses that you've used. This feature makes it easy to use, Go to, to jump directly to any location, and return back to the previous location by selecting the last entry in the list. Notice that, AAK92 is the active cell. I will use the Go to dialog to jump to 013. If you open the Go to dialog box now, you can find the cell address AAK92, automatically added to the list of recently used. In addition, every time you open the Go to window, Excel automatically adds the current cell to the list. Excel also adds the list of all the tables, and any named cells or cell ranges to this list which makes the Go to Dialog an important feature to navigate around a worksheet. The auto additions, other than the tables, and named cell or cell ranges, will be cleared once the Excel is closed. This feature not only jumps to any cell in the current worksheet, but it can move anywhere in your workbook. In other words you can move across to any cell in other worksheets of the workbook. Notice that, the current worksheet is, Sheet 1 and the active cell is, M6. Press F5 to open the Go to dialog, and type in, Sheet 3, ABC123 as shown, and press Enter. This will move the active cell to, ABC123 in Sheet 3. If you open the Go to dialog now, you can find address of the cell, from where you moved in simply by pressing enter key, will move the active cell back to sheet 1, cell M6. Though the name box also allows you to jump to any cell, it does not provide you with the list of previously visited addresses, thereby making the go to window a lot easier to use. There are a lot of other key combinations that can achieve a lot of things that I have mentioned till now which I will cover as we continue with the rest of this tutorial. Check out our site, ignani.com, for a full list of all the keyboard shortcuts for Excel 2010. Till now, we were referencing the cells with the column names using alphabets, and rows using their numbers. But this is not the only way. Excel also provides another way of referencing, known as R1C1 style. I will cover the R1C1 reference style in our next video. If you have any questions or need more information on any part of this video, 
please use the forum at ignani.com, we will be happy to help you. You can find, a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how to videos, and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Use our forum topic related to this tutorial to get answers to all your questions. We would want your learning process as interactive as possible. Feel free to contact us.